Aloha! Boy, have we got a great show for you. But normally, this show is called Talk Story with John Waihei. Today, we have Talk Story with Governor Ige and former Governor Waihei. So it's the show on the governors. That's why we're hanging out here at the state capitol. <laughs> Terrific. That's the uh, modern technology. Welcome, Governor. It's a pleasure. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, you know, um, uh, my family have, are very proud of you, you know, especially, especially the Okinawan side of the family, you know. <laughs> and uh, as you know, that, that's a very important part. That's whether I eat dinner or not every night. I, um, you know, by, I had never met relatives uh, that I have in Okinawa until I become governor, and they were probably more excited than, um, than my yeah. personal family. So, um, but it's, it's been great. Yeah, because that, that's sort of the story of Hawaii, right? Uh, you know, the, Governor Ariyoshi was the first Japanese governor. Governor uh, <coughs> Wahimi was the first Native Hawaiian. Then Governor um, uh, Caetano, the first Filipino Hawaiian uh, governor. Not yes. Filipino Hawaiian, but first Filipino governor. And uh, Linda Lingo, the first Jewish woman governor. And uh, Abercrombie, the first senior citizen governor. <laughs> and now you, the first Okinawan governor. So, you know, this is the story of Hawaii. Eh? Absolutely. Although I, I got to tell you, because I heard that you actually appeared on um, uh, Tech, you know, Think Tech Hawaii on the shows. Yes, I did. I, uh, in my previous capacity as a senator, I had made a couple of uh, uh, appearances here, and I, I, as a candidate governor, I had uh, met and talked about different issues. On well, the that's show. why that we're going to take credit for you. You know, <laughs> Think Tech Hawaii believes strongly believes that they contributed to the first the election of the first <laughs> Okinawan governor. So welcome. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> I'm uh, glad to uh, be a product of Think Tech well, as well. Well, we we need to get, get you know. Um, I saw you in the paper this morning. You were attending uh, the groundbreaking for the whole Pili project. Uh, I guess it was yesterday yes. on the Everett Plain. And as you know, that was a controversial, uh, controversial project yes. that was approved by the prior administration. And I saw you out there. And the justification for that project, obviously, is the development of housing for the people of Hawaii. So, you know, in, in your view, what, how will that uh, project contribute to the solution of housing uh, for our people? We do know, and I, I think, uh, Governor, even when you were governor, right. uh, housing has been a big challenge in our community. I suppose it's a function of us being island communities and there being limited land. Right. Um, but we know that we, we need today 66,000 housing units if we really wanted to provide for everyone no, in our no, community. No, 66,000 units of what kind of housing? The, the whole range. I think it, it covers the whole range from affordable to public housing to housing at the market rate. So the thing that I'm most excited about the whole Pili project is it's definitely needed, you know, more than 11,000 houses in a master plan community. You know, there are a couple of firsts with that project. You know, they will also support commercial farming um, as part of that development, as you right, know. Right. As you said, it was one of those controversies about taking away prime agricultural right. lands exactly. uh, and, and, and putting housing on it. Uh, and then they also will have a community farming as well so that uh, those who are so inclined can grow the food that they eat. And, and you know, so the project in and of itself, I think, is part of our uh, Sustainable Hawaii Initiative, you know, encouraging people uh, and being able to produce more food. Uh, so for in addition to uh, Ho'opili, what, what, what else do you see as uh, on, on the horizon for, uh, to solve the housing crisis? Well, you know, we had uh, last session, we had a terrific housing package. You right. know, we had met with um, developers and all the housing agencies to really talk about, okay, how can we help? You know, I think everybody recognizes the need in our community. Uh, and so we had a round table and we talked story and trying to find out what would help. You know, a lot of the, the developers talked about the fact that, 
you know, the government agencies always also have uh, conflicting deadlines and, you know, the, you know, they're asking for proposals when, when out of cycle of when we can get access to federal funds and a whole bunch of things. So, you know, uh, they also talked about the lack of infra infrastructure, right. you know, about the state needing to at least be able to support infrastructure for their projects specifically. Uh, and then, you know, more assistance in rental housing, you know, I think, and you probably see, try to figure out what is the state's role right. in housing. Exactly. And, and, you know, and affordable rentals is, a, I think, a, a sweet spot that I think over time has has been one of the areas that I think yeah, government has a role in, in providing affordable rentals. You know, at one rentals. time, at one point in time, the um, there were a lot of uh, affordable rentals that used to be actually owned by the city and county of Honolulu. Right. And they sold it. And um, so what do you see as maybe their role uh, in, in your, your initiative? Well, we have, um, we have been talking with the county as well. You know, the whole transit-oriented development really comes up as, you know, I think one of the controversies or what made whole Pili controversy was the fact that it was on prime ag land and the, the ag land was rezoned. Um, you know, I know that we need to get more land, egg land, in production of food. I think that that's what everybody talks about. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to be the land at whole Pili, and we definitely are making So, But, but the, the concept, available. your concept, is this idea of having a, like, almost like a mixed-use community, but instead of mixed housing commercial, you have mixed uh, housing and agriculture. And commercial. So and it's, commercial. The whole, it's the whole package, right? And, and there'll be schools. Uh, okay, there schools. Is commercial. Yes. schools. I know that education is one of your top priorities. Yes. What What do you see uh, as uh, the, uh, that uh, we we will be doing, or what do you see should be done uh, in terms of making our educational system what we all want it to be? I mean, I think it's uh, a couple things, uh, you know, Governor. I think we both kind of come from the place that we understand that public education really is the bedrock of our communities. You know, right. the better the public school system is, the better our community functions. You know, I, I do think, and one of my criticisms of No Child Left Behind, right. uh, the federal law, was that it really was about one size fits all. You know, their premise was that, you know, this is cookie cutter. Why are we having such a hard time? Other developing nations might have leapfrogged us because they just said we, we're going to do this and everybody's going to do the same thing. You know, I really believe that that doesn't work. It's really one size doesn't fit all. Exactly. It's really about exactly. empowering schools and, and those closest to the schools and getting them the resources and letting them make the decisions right. because you know Honoka High School is different <laughs> than Pro City High School. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and what how the kids relate to we their would play, education. We would play Pro, Pro City, though, with baseball. <laughs> you know, yes, yes. Maybe not any other sport, <laughs> well, but baseball, Honokawa would take you guys on. Uh, well, <laughs> we, we definitely know that. But, but it really is the notion that every, the most important unit within the Department of Education is the school. And we need to Focus get them the, the resources. Students. We need to make sure that there's quality leadership at the school. We need to make sure that the... the, the so one of the big complaints is that it seems like the, the uh, Department of Education is very centralized. Yes. And, and I know what, you, what you're speaking about is, is a kind of a decentralization of that authority. Right. Now, how, how do we decentralize? Uh, well, I, I think it's, uh, it happens on a couple fronts. I mean, I do think you know, that leadership is about walking the talk. So, I mean, part of, you know, what I've always been concerned um, for a long time, the department talks about empowerment, but everything they do is centralized. Right. You know, so it's really about trying to figure out how we can get the funds directly to the schools through the weighted student form and, and, and some of those activities, but really make sure that the principals and the teachers and the professionals at the school are empowered to make the decision. Actually, make the decision. Yes, and, I and mean, what about things like air conditioning, though? <laughs> well, you know that's, I mean, that's you know. a little bit different. I <laughs> yeah. mean, you know, and I, I know, yes, that I kind of 
Um, By the way, I, I believe in your dream. You know, I, we, we should do it. You know, and, and the it's last, achievable, it's specific. The last big initiative for facilities in, in public education was during your time. Right. right. I mean, when we had the education fund well, and, the, you, and we had committed the school's uh, repair and maintenance backlog was horrendous and we made a big effort. You know, I think we've done a much better job in the general upkeep of the school since that. It started with you and we made all that investment. But well, it started it, with you, but it was with me, but it also started with you voting for it. So I, I was know there. that you were the great uh, yes, ally. Yes, no, I was definitely yeah. there at the time. And it was, you know, it was sort of like coming full circle. And, uh, you know, I do think that it's tied to climate change and the fact that the, uh, the planet absolutely. is hotter. Absolutely. You know, last summer was the hottest summer on record for, for a long time. And uh, seeing the children and the uh, teachers in the classroom. And it's uh, also a specific thing. I mean, yes. it's a specific goal. It's something that we as a community can actually achieve and see. Absolutely. And uh, I think that was fantastic, uh, fantastic vision. And I, I really hope that you, you, you don't, uh, you know, let go of it. No, and we, we are a little bit behind schedule, but I think, you know, the department has really stepped up to the task. And, you know, the first round of contracts have been awarded. You and know, I think people don't we'll realize better. that. That it's it's you know we it's not education not all theory it's about having sitting in a classroom where learning can in fact right. take place from a teacher who can in fact teach uh, you know like they should um, we're going to be uh, you know now that we're on the subject of climate change we're going to be coming back to talk to you a little bit about the conference that was just held here but I want to tell the audience that they can call in this I got the governor captured here. <laughs> He has no choice but to answer your questions. So call in 415-871-2474. And uh, I'm inviting all of you to uh, call in and um, take advantage of this opportunity. Um, at this point in time, I think we're going to take a break. And so we'll be back shortly. And when we come back, we want to talk about the conference that was just held in Hawaii. Absolutely. And what that uh, means for the state of Hawaii. I, uh, I would look forward to that. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I serve as senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. You're watching ThinkTech Hawaii on ThinkTechHawaii.com, which broadcasts six live talk shows from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. every weekday, and then streams earlier shows all night long. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. Okay, welcome back to Talk Story with the Governors. And um, what a great day this is. So we did get a call. We okay. did get a call to, uh, right before the break, and somebody wants to know what's happening with the code challenge. Absolutely. I think I thank you very much. Um, the engineer in me appreciates the <laughs> call, uh, and the governor is excited to uh, answer. Uh, you know, Governor, and you've, you've said we've been working to improve the uh, infrastructure in state government. Right. And a lot of the computer systems are old. And so we've in the process of uh, updating all of that. You still got some of my wings. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> wow. and, and we're trying to make those changes. So as we're going through the process of making changes, I per personally participated with uh, some the university on some of these hackathons. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I've been a judge and you know how in a one day period, everybody comes together and, and tries to develop an app. Everybody has a smartphone today and uh, people uh, compete to to provide an app. On and this allows you to, in, to interact with some of the brightest young people in, uh, in the state of Hawaii. So we have a new uh, chief uh, information officer, Todd Nakapoi, okay. a Wailua High School graduate. Fantastic. Smart guy. But I said, Todd, we should do something like this for state government. You yeah. know, get, and he, three months later, we're in the second or third week of the first annual Hawaii hackathon. Um, annual first 
annual first Hawaii annual cold you, you know what fascinates me about that kind of is the possibilities that can come out of it when young intelligent people young meaning you know uh, fresh yes and uh, look at a problem without any preconditions absolutely and and we knew that if we just did it in one day 24 hours they would not have enough time to understand state government and really develop something. So we smarter. We did it for one month. Oh, so wow. it would be one day they meet every week to try and and I got the departments to stand up and identify challenges that they wanted to put before the the public. And like the, solving and affordable housing. Absolutely. Huh? Well, we didn't we <laughs> didn't do that because we wanted to be no, tied know, to technology I know, I know. and that. Uh, so the departments did a great job. Uh, one of them, and you know, it's uh, for Oahu uh, Community Correctional Facility trying to schedule visitations. It's wow, such a big. There's yeah. one person. They're calling all the inmates. Can Boy, that so is that is a department that could use a lot of Absolutely. help. Absolutely. Yeah. So they came and present to all of the smartest uh, tech well, software I, I developers. Well, hope, I hope that you take advantage of. No, it. we there are seven or eight projects that different agencies have put in front of the public. We have the best software developers going after it. You know, it, it runs for another week, I believe, or two weeks. And then we hope to get some useful application. That well, I hope you people. use it, and I hope Absolutely. you publish, and I hope you acknowledge these young Absolutely. people Absolutely, and this is the first annual. We hope to do this every single Can year. Can you imagine? You you're not only creating things and solutions from uh, um, in doing this process. You're creating leaders. Absolutely, the and we're creating that, the people that are sitting in there are start, gonna, you know, can buy into and, your solution. Right, and we're creating an environment for people to believe that they can do it and make a difference. Oh, so it's a, it's a couple things, right? That we're supporting development, software development, development of apps, yes. apps here in Hawaii. We're we're creating the spirit of entrepreneurship that, that they don't have to just count on somebody else, that they can take action to do it. We're creating cooperation on the state side. You know how it right, is. Right. It takes something to put yourself out and be willing to oh, work with fantastic. these guys. Fantastic. And then, you know, I, so I think it's a win-win-win all well, the way Well, talking about win-win-win, we just had the conference, I think it was the, um, uh, um, the World Conservation Congress Yes. In, in Hawaii. You participated in that, the President uh, Obama. Yes. participated he flew down and we created this great uh, um, monument a wilderness area that's been preserved for future generations what what do you see as uh, as Hawaii uh, gaining from all of this you know it's a it's a real couple of different things uh, governor and I think you you probably know some of the people that really was pushing for Hawaii right. to host this. Remember, this is the first time that the World Conservation Congress is being held in the United States of America. Right. So Hawaii is the first um, first state in the country to host this. Um, a couple other things, you know, it has become the most successful Congress in really? the history. Oh, they fantastic. have more participants. The participant uh, count went over 10,000. Fantastic. for the first time so that's not that's also good for our economy it's obviously. good for our economy if you talk to the hotels the hotels are full and they're right. in the malls and they're spending so that all helps so we definitely will get an economic boost from this conference oh, fantastic i think more importantly though as you know uh, hawaii is at the forefront of conservation we uh, have the most endangered species in the world Right. Uh, but we do a good job in different areas, and some places we're more successful than others. But so what this Congress has given us is the world stage, all of a well, conference. Governor, I, I want to thank you for making Hawaii a leader. Yes. Uh, you know, in in this whole area. Now we have a caller. Sure. Uh, uh, I have another question. Okay. Uh, let me let me take another another call, and the call is: uh, If Hawaii is a leader, then. Uh, how much is Hawaii a leader in energy these days? And uh, we have an initiative now that calls for 100% renewables by 2045. Uh, does the governor think, does Governor Ige think that we'll be able to make that? And what will it take to be able to achieve 100% okay. by 2045? Uh, well, what the call is basically saying is that in addition to conservation, we are a leader in energy yes. and uh, alternative energy development and, 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 and the like. And do you think that uh, there's a state goal to achieve uh, that needs to be done by 2025? Um, 
Do you think we can meet our goals? What is it, first of all, and well, do you think we can meet it? I, it's a couple of things, and I, I'm not exactly certain what the caller is specifically re relating to. We do have the goal of 100% uh, renewable right. by 2045. As part of this Sustainable Hawaii Initiative, we've also planted the goal of, by 2030, uh, reducing uh, use of uh, transportation fuels by 70%. Uh, and we've also uh, looked at uh, reducing um, uh, electric fossil fuel and uh, conservation to reduce uh, fossil fuels for electricity generation All right. uh, by by uh, seventy percent. So I mean I think both of those goals are very aggressive and important. Well, they are um, aggressive. Yes, and, and I and you think we're going to make it? Oh, absolutely. I you know I'm the technology guy, and I, and, I know. And we, I know you love this stuff. No, we you know? and we've seen a huge uh, improvement in the technology. You know, for the first time, we're getting uh, solar uh, PV projects that pencil out at below the cost of us in oil and producing electricity oh, fantastic. you know we expect you know the the Navy has signed a, a memorandum of uh, agreement with us to do these joint energy projects we have a PV uh, project that we're doing with the Navy and Hawaiian Electric Company and, and, and bring it full circle and your affordable housing uh, projects and they all fit into this well, and we, all of this is coordinated uh, right I mean we do know that and most of the the new um, uh, housing projects are more energy efficient and and you know we are focused on um, revitalization you know I had an initiative for Kalihi 21 right you know really committed to how would we look at older communities and redevelop them in a way that adds value to the community provides additional housing uh, and can How be exciting! That's a great vision. You no, know, so I, you should talk about this a lot because <laughs> it is a great vision. I mean, I, you're doing mixed-use housing. Absolutely. Uh, that is con coordination with good education and uh, and energy, and you're not only doing it in new neighborhoods; you're rebuilding places Abs like Kali. Absolutely. So I mean, you know, it really is looking at, uh, you know. Governor, it really is about what's the Hawaii that you and I would want well, to see, leave yeah. to our kids, right? Exactly and, and, exactly. and your kids and what would their future and what would the kids' kids see? See. Uh, and and if we don't develop in a sustainable way, exactly. at some point in time it falls apart. Wow, how that's that's fantastic. Well, Governor, you know, I, I know we've been talking about issues, but before th this program ends, I, I did want to talk to you about the personal side. Of being of, of being governor, okay, yes. and I was trying to formulate a question to, to bring that out, but m maybe something like this, maybe if you could tell me like what is the most or some of the most pleasant things that happened to you after you got elected, and some of the most unpleasant. Well, things. I mean, I think. You know, and I've, I, I went off to the NGA, National Governors Association, new governors, and, and talked about and had a chance to talk to experienced governors. And, and they talked about being governor being the best job in the country. Yeah, I think you so, know, especially I, being governor of Hawaii. Absolutely. So? And I, you know, it really is about the opportunity to make a difference and improve the lives of our community each and every day. So, you know, I, I do get excited. I'm um, proud to be governor of Hawaii. Uh, you know, I feel it uh, a privilege uh, and the ability to make a difference in a wide range of issues uh, each and every day is really right. something that you don't get in most jobs. Right. But that's, that's, that's really And then contrasting that with being state senator, because you were a senator for a right. while and a major one, contributed many things. Right. But as governor, it's very different, as you know. The you buck know, stops there. Right. And, and it's a d different thing. You know, as a legislator, you've got to pass legislation in order to make change. As governor, you have lots of latitude to, to respond. You know, on homelessness, you know, there's lots of things that we can do to move money around and, and make a difference uh, today rather than wait to the legislative process. So it's things like that, I think, that... Um, makes the job enjoyable. Okay, what, what, what are some of the unpleasant things? Well, you know, there's a lot of things, you know, people ask me, when was the first time you knew that your life was different? Well, it's two days after election, you know, I, I get a call from my neighbor, because we're not moved in yet, and he goes, hey, 
there's a car outside with two big guys in the car. <laughs> They've been there all night, right? Yeah. And it's security because, you know, security is with you. <laughs> well, at least you have your neighbors looking well, out I, for well, I know, but it's sort of like, oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> you know, and then and then you're, we, we move into the house and, you know, and, uh, and then I get into the laundry room and there's water everywhere. It's flooding. <laughs> What's going on? The refrigerator. Uh, so the, the life of the governor machine. is not perfect. No. Right? Well, and worse yet, I got to clean up the mess. You know, there's, there's no staff. So I, <laughs> well, yeah. it, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't yeah, we have come to do something automatic. about that. You know, <laughs> I, I, I can think of some of my, well, no, but also I think, okay, we were just talking about a little bit about this. You know, there's this big national issue about emails, right? Yes. Especially for Democrats, right? Yeah. So now we were talking about the fact that today uh, you get a request for almost daily for all the I, emails on some subject. Or you, yeah, you have I mean, to put you know, it that. is, and, and, and I, you know, I've been a, a big proponent of technology and using technology to make government more efficient. And yes, we're all on email. And we do get constant requests, information requests for all of the emails uh, on you know, it used to be Nextera or, you know, yes, other, right, right, I mean, right, right. it's just uh, Everybody wants to know how yes, you, how everybody you do that. Everybody wants to see everything that, uh, you know, that we have, uh, which can be a burden at some time. Well, I, actually, okay, let me ask you another question that, in, along the same line. Do, when you were in the legislature, you were one of the best loves uh, senators. Uh -huh. Do your colleagues still like you as much as they did then? <laughs> some do and some don't, you know, I... <laughs> It, it is one of those things. I really enjoy working with uh, most of them. Yeah. Uh, every, we have disagreements in, in different areas. I, I think it, is, it, there, it does take a transition to recognize that um, my role as governor is very different than my role as a senator. Legend, yeah. yeah, and, and it's, really, it's taken me a while to really well, understand I'll tell you one what that thing, is. One thing, and, and they have, at least for myself, what I found is that being governor brought my family unit a lot closer together. <laughs> did, did that happen to Ab you as well? Absolutely. Because you got, you got a great family. No, and, 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 and you uh, know how it is, right. governor, when you're running, um, the, especially I was running against an incumbent. Right. So, um, you know, it, it's, it it's is about friends, uh, friends and family, yeah. you know, are the first supporters and um, it really, uh, all of my kids were old enough to really have active and important parts in the campaign. They were doing social media, they were editing press, press right. releases, they, they were helping well, me with got, speeches. You've got great kids. Yeah, so it's well, Governor, I, I want to thank you. I really, truly want to thank you for joining us today and making yourself available. And, uh, you know, uh, it was uh, very enjoyable. I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity. I, I, you know, I do enjoy uh, having this uh, opportunity. I didn't realize it was going to be broadcast, but I, you know, I've done this a lot. <laughs> well, it's broadcast on the website, so I'm very proud of our little show. <laughs> well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. This is Talk Story with the Governors today. And again, we want to thank Governor Ige for sharing us uh, his precious time. Aloha. Aloha.